Hi, and welcome to another Excel demo with Rich Kerr. In this scenario, I'll show you how to use the Choose Rows and Sort By functions to create a dynamic list of the top five values from another array. So here's the real world example. I've got a, a number of production teams that work for the organization, and they all have different numbers of units produced over a given time period. And the production manager wants to know which teams are in the lead, specifically the top five teams. And that's what I have here. If we look at our numbers, we can see that, in fact, this team called Larkin does, in fact, have the largest number. Um, they just said it's small enough. You could probably eyeball it and see, yeah, Wilson Central should come after that, Fulton, so on and so forth. It's dynamic, meaning if something were to change here, let's say this uh, this team called uh, Whack-A-Mall, let's say we discovered that was at uh, 240,000, then we see it becomes the top value. Um, or if there was another value that uh, fell off, maybe Wilson Central wasn't really 125, it was only 12,000. Well, that certainly doesn't uh, get it into the top five, right? So Wilson falls off. And now we see uh, Hot Springs is in there. And the chart is changing accordingly. So how do we make this happen? So I'll show you. I'm going to get rid of the chart, and I'll blow away columns D and E so you can see exactly how we do this. Okay. So uh, first, how do we uh, work with this data set to get the top five showing. Well, one of the things I did, and, and this first step actually is optional, I turned this into a table and I called it production. And that's just gonna make the formula writing a little simpler. If you've worked with name ranges and tables before, you know that uh, tables automatically expand as you add more rows, and that's great in case uh, I wanna have more data added to this later. So this is a table called production. I'm gonna come over to column D and type a heading called uh, team and then another one called uh, units. So I'm going to start in D2 and do an equals sort by open paren. And sort by is one of those uh, relatively new functions that will spill its results. And by that, I mean, if, if we're saying we want to sort an array, that's not just a single value that fits in one cell. There might be multiple rows and multiple columns, and that will be the case here. So even though I'm writing the formula in D2, the results will spill down and to the right as needed. The first argument is the array that I'm sorting, uh, and that's going to be my production table. Obviously, I could have just typed in the word production, and that would have worked as well. So production, that's the array of data, comma, and then what am I sorting by? Well, I'm going to sort by the units produced. So if I select that range of data, notice it has the table name and then a square brackets, the uh, name of the column heading. Now, by default, it sorts in ascending order, but if I type a comma, we can see that with a negative one in this optional parameter called sort order, if I do a negative one, that's for descending order. Let's do a close paren, and now we have all of those values, but it's sorted in descending order with whack a at 240K as the top value. Now I'm going to select uh, these values and I'm going to apply some formatting because I'd like to see the comma in the thousands position and I don't need any decimal places. So we're just about there, except I don't need all of the values. I only want the top five. So I'm going to wrap my sort by formula inside the choose rows function. So with choose rows, I have uh, first uh, an argument which is the uh, array that I wish to choose rows from. So that array is actually already taken care of by this sort by function. So the resulting array from the sort by function is my array within my choose rows. I can jump to the end of that then and type a comma. And the next argument and the one after that, I'm indicating by number which rows I wish to see. So if I want to see the top five, I can just enter one, comma two, comma three, comma four, comma five. That's not the only way to do it, but it's certainly one way to do it. And since I'm only selecting five rows, that's a pretty quick and dirty way to do it. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And we can see I now have the top five rows from this data set. And it's dynamic, right? If I come in here and say, oh, you know, we got new information from River Place. And they're at uh, 298,000. Well, of course, River Place is now 
in the top position and everything else shifted accordingly. Now, if I want to turn this into a chart, well, I can just select this data and go to the insert tab. We'll do a uh, chart, maybe a two dimensional pie chart. And there you go. So now I have a dynamic uh, array in cells D and E and a chart based on that. I might choose one of these chart styles to add some additional information to my chart. Maybe I'll have percentages or um, maybe I'll go to add chart element and we'll do uh, data labels or data label options. And maybe instead of uh, or in addition to the value, maybe we would add, say, the uh, category name. And so there we have the actual name of the production facility. So there you go. So if a value over here changes, if South Loop moves into the leadership with, uh, say, 500,000 entries, we can see South Loop has that, right? And, you know, as charts change, you may encounter issues with your labels. You may have to do some adjusting, but the heavy lifting is done. Your chart will always be updated with the largest values or the top five values from your data set. And, um, and it cuts out a lot of the work. So this kind of automation can really save you some time. I hope you found it useful. Please check in again soon for more Excel demos with Rich Kerr. Have a productive day. Peace.